Well, hey folks, welcome back. Coming in on level six of Civil War Secret Missions by the History Channel, uh, the USS Pittsburgh. I just realized that I kept saying that I had double damage, and now that I look at it, I see that I didn't. I only had 50% damage. So I'm going to try something here. Maybe we can get even sillier physics if we increase that damage. Naval warfare was yet another source of punishment used by both North and South to crush its foe. Shells from nearby gunboats pounded cities under siege, and naval battles on sea and on rivers raged between the Union and the fledgling Southern Navy. The ironclad became the most feared of all warships. Driven by steam, they got their name from the skin of metal encasing their wooden hulls. They fired deadly explosive shells that could destroy entire buildings with one blast. At the first light of dawn, April 29, 1863, Union ironclad ships moved down the Mississippi to attack the fortress of Grand Gulf. Under the command of Rear Admiral Porter, the ships made an all-out assault against these mighty bulwarks, completely cutting off Pittsburgh, making her ripe for the taking. Listen up, men. The Grand Gulf Fortress is our target. It's heavily defended even against monsters like these. We first attack the lower defenses, then the ones above. If we meet heavy resistance, we will retreat. The fortress is not worth a great loss of blood. To your guns! We're closing on the top. Well, you know how much I like ironclads, and here we are, the ironclad level in this game. There's only one, unfortunately. I do find it interesting how completely different the ironclad situation in the war was. Uh, when comparing the ocean to the rivers. the uh, uh, Both North and South had brown and blue water navies uh, because they were so completely different. And look at this. This this is how this level works. It's a long-range shelling of the, uh, of the buildings. Uh, there are some guys with cannon standing around there on the shore. I see what they were trying to do with this level, but it is incredibly difficult to aim this thing, especially as we get farther and farther away. The ship kind of goes back and forth. And uh, this this took really more tries than I would have preferred to figure out. But it's not terrible. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of fun if you ignore how fast this supposedly muzzle-loading cannon is reloading. Anyway, this is the Battle of Grand Gulf. Band Battle of Grand Gulf was fought on April 29, 1863 during the American Civil War. It is part of the Vicksburg Campaign of Major General Ulysses S. Grant uh, before, uh, before he rose to fame. Uh, Union Naval Forces under Rear Admiral David D. Porter, just like they said there in the uh, in the uh, mission briefing there, uh, led seven ironclads in an attack on Confederate fortifications and batteries at Grand Gulf, downriver from Vicksburg, Mississippi. Uh, now, the Confederates did withstand the bombardment, and so they prevented the infantry from landing, uh, and, uh, and it was considered a defeat. Uh, the Union did not manage to pull off what they wanted to do. Uh, though it, it didn't affect much in the long run, it was only a very minor setback to Grant's further plan to cross the Mississippi uh, and advance on Vicksburg. So it didn't uh, didn't really work out for the Confederacy in, um, in the long run. So the particulars of it there was uh, these seven ironclads were supposed to uh, run the fortifications and uh, silence the Confederate guns then secure the whole area for uh, John A. McClernand's, uh, McClernand's 13th Corps. Uh, they were on uh, a bunch of barges and, uh, and ships uh, up the way. Uh, the ships that uh, were in the attack were the Benton, the Lafayette, the De Tuscumbia, the Carondelet, the Louisville, the Mound City, and the Pittsburgh, which is our player ship right here. Uh, it began at 8 a.m., continued till about 1.30 p.m. The, uh, the ships moved within about 100 yards of the Confederate guns, uh, so this is, this is relatively accurate. Here we go, coming around on our third pass. You can see one of the ironclads right there. That's a, that's a fun model. 
Uh, okay, so the Union gunboats did manage to silence the lower batteries, but the upper batteries were way too far away, uh, difficult to reach. And, uh, and unfortunately, one of the ironclads, the Tuscumbia, uh, was damaged, and the, all the transports had to draw off. Uh, after dark, the ironclads uh, chugged over there, and they tried again, and, um, and then the steamboats and the barges ran the gauntlet. So even though... It failed during the day. They just tried again at night, and it worked out just fine. So, so it didn't uh, didn't really play that big of a uh, of a role. Um, and then eventually, uh, the uh, uh, the Vicksburg campaign just sort of charged on along. Now, I don't care too much about that, but look at the design of this ironclad. Doesn't look like anything we've seen so far yet, does it? That is a river ironclad, a river-going ironclad, certainly built to different specifications. Hold on a second. Two, one. So I, I didn't hit the targets. You can't traverse all the way left or right. So if you uh, go too far down the river, you can't aim at those targets anymore. That's okay. We'll just load the last checkpoint. Listen up, men. Ah, joke's on you. There are no checkpoints. Get to restart the level. Here we go. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. So, that that ironclad right there. That ironclad. That, um, that's an interesting looking ironclad to me. That looks like a city class ironclad to me. I know it's not, but it sure looks like one. And you know what the most famous of the city class gunboats were? Why, that's right. It was the USS Cairo. It's spelled Cairo, but it's pronounced Cairo. Uh, it's named after Cairo, Illinois, unless you're from Illinois, uh, in which case it's pronounced Cairo instead of Cairo. Uh, in June 1862, the Cairo captured the Confederate garrison of Fort Pillow on the Mississippi and enabled the Union forces to occupy Memphis, Tennessee. It was part of the Yazoo Pass expedition, sunk on December 12, 1862, while clearing mines. Uh, and the Cairo was the first ship to ever be sunk by a mine remotely detonated by hand. So if you think back to all your fun time playing Battlefield, Battlefield 1942, or Battlefield 3, or Battlefield God knows what, uh, where you're holding your block of C4 and you put it on the Jeep and it goes rolling away and you hit the button and it explodes, well, the Cairo was the first ship to be destroyed by something like that. Uh, and the Cairo I find particularly interesting because it's still around. It's one of only four surviving ironclads. Uh, it's at the Vicksburg National Military Park. So the museum that is really not too far from right where this level takes place here. It was an Eads class. Uh, I, oh, I'm sorry, it was a city class, but it was an Eads ironclad. It means it was built by James Eads, uh, the uh, the Iron Baron, uh, under contract uh, to the United States Department of War. Uh, she was commissioned as part of the Union Army's Western gunboat flotilla and, um, and served in that flotilla on the Mississippi and Ohio rivers and their tributaries uh, until she was transferred to the Navy uh, in 1862. Uh, let's see. Active in the occupation of Clarksville, Tennessee, 17 February 1862, and Nashville, Tennessee, the Cairo stood downriver on April 12, escorting mortar boats. Those are interesting looking things. They're just barges with iron walls put up on them and then a, bo a big mortar right in the middle of them. They, they were usually not powered. They had to be towed into position. Uh, so, the mortar boats were there to uh, conduct operations against Fort Pillow. An engagement with Confederate gunboats at Plum Point Bend marked a series of blockading and bombardment activities, which culminated in the abandonment of the fort by its defenders on the 4th of June. Unfortunately, uh, the Cairo did not live very long to enjoy this, uh, this victory. On 6 June 1862, uh, the Cairo joined in the triumph of several, seven Union ships and tug over eight Confederate gunboats over Memf off of uh, Memphis. Uh, five of the opponents uh, were sunk or run ashore. Nice thing about river combat is if things are going badly for you, you just head for the nearest shore, uh, since a lot of these rivers were not that deep. Uh, two enemy gunboats were damaged, one did escape, 
And then uh, that night, Union forces were able to occupy the city, the city of Memphis. Uh, some months after that, uh, the Cairo joined the Yazoo Pass expedition, uh, which is how it was destroyed. Uh, clearing mines for the river, uh, preparing for the attack on Haynes Bluff. Cairo, it, it's interesting. The old documents say that the Cairo struck a torpedo, but it wasn't a torpedo. That's what they called mines back then. So the old, uh, you know, damn the torpedoes, full speed ahead thing. He's talking about naval mines, not actual torpedoes. Oh, okay, so we've completed the objectives, which means we're going to get some new things here. I should say that the Cairo sank in only 12 minutes, but there were no casualties. Everybody was able to get off. Here we go. Waiting for the trigger. Anytime. Okay, I don't see that, but that is what happened. I cut out quite a few attempts at this. This level is actually why I stopped playing this game years ago. I could not get past it, uh, but uh, looks like I still remember my angles. Uh, easily the most, uh, the most frustrating level in this entire game, but now it's done. Uh, or is it? You'll see this again in the bonus level. So uh, that's it for level six. Thanks for tuning in. And, uh, and uh, like I said, we're done with the CSA level, so it's all... Union levels from here on out. So see you next time.